It's now my great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Guy Kawasaki, UCLA Anderson graduate of 1979. Guy is the co-founder of alltop.com, an online magazine rack of popular topics on the web, and a founding uh, partner at Garage Technology Ventures. He's the author of 10 books, I'll just list a couple, Enchantment, Reality Check, The Art of the Start, Rules for Revolutionaries, Selling the Dream, The Macintosh Way, etc. Guy earned his BA from Stanford before he uh, received his MBA. He also holds an honorary doctorate from Babson College. Guy enrolled in law school at UC Davis and he lasted there a week happily for us because then he came to Anderson. Guy's first real job was while he still attended Anderson, he counted diamonds for a jewelry manufacturer called Nova Stylings. Because that's a business that's firstly competitive, Guy says that that's where he learned how to sell in that highly competitive environment, a skill you will see he uses every day uh, since then. From counting and selling diamonds, Guy went on to work for Apple, where he indeed sold, no, perhaps the word is more appropriately evangelized, about the Macintosh to software and hardware developers so that they would adopt it and develop apps. He left Apple to start a Macintosh database company called Actius, which published a database product called Fourth Dimension that is still around today and, and quite successful. He's gone on to found several other companies, including Fog City Software, Old Top, and Garage Technologies. He went back to, uh, to Apple in 1995 as an Apple Fellow to maintain and rejuvenate the Macintosh cult. It's hard to believe, but in those years, Apple was on the downturn. It was supposedly dying at that point. Well, he definitely did a good job at resurrecting the brand and the cult at Apple and at Macintosh. He's been an entrepreneur, author, speaker, blogger, and tweeter since then. Two years ago, UCLA Anderson named Guy as one of our 100 inspirational alumni as part of our 75th anniversary celebration. Those who follow Guy on Twitter know that he tweets constantly. He's probably the most prolific tweeter on Twitter, and I know he's been tweeting already today. Please welcome Guy Kawasaki. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dean. Uh, wow, what a great day, huh? What a great day. Congratulations to the class of 2012, as well as, <laughs> as, well as your family and friends. Um, I have to say, it's also a great day for me because I have the honor, and indeed it is an honor, to be your keynote speaker. Um, and not only do I have the honor of being your keynote speaker, I get to sit next to Carol Scott. And Carol Scott and I go back a very long time. Uh, in fact, I would attribute all the marketing that I know, I learned from Carol Scott. And one of the high points in my life, Carol, is that I got an A plus on your marketing final when I was a student here. So, it's been downhill since then. <laughs> so this morning, uh, when I woke up to fly to Los Angeles, I said to my wife, honey, in your wildest dreams, did you ever think that I would be the UCLA commencement speaker? And she said to me, honey, you're not in my wildest dreams. <laughs> so. I am looking at you thinking, I wish I was at the beginning of my career. Really, I can't go back in time, but perhaps I can help you accelerate the success of your career. I use a top 10 format for my speeches, and I'm not going to break that tradition now. These are my top 10 totally practical tips for how to succeed in business, okay? Tip number one you should aspire to jump to the next curve. 
Great success and innovation doesn't occur on the same curve. Great success and innovation doesn't happen when you make better sameness. Great stuff happens when you jump to the next curve or you create the next curve. Think of ice harvesters, ice factories, and then refrigerator companies. Think of daisy wheel printers and then dot matrix printers. You may not be old enough to know what those two kinds of printers were. And finally, the laser printer. Think of the printing press becoming desktop publishing, becoming the Kindle ebook. Great innovation occurs when you jump to the next curve. Number two, don't worry, be crappy. Bobby McFerrin had a great song called Don't Worry, Be Happy. In business, you need to not worry and be crappy. When your product or service has jumped to the next curve, or you have indeed created the next curve, it's time to ship. The way it works in Silicon Valley, just let me tell you, is we ship and then we test. <laughs> I hope none of you go into biotech with that attitude. <laughs> Number three, never ask people to do something that you wouldn't do. I think this is the single best test for reasonableness and ethics. Are you asking your customers to do something that you wouldn't do? Are you asking your employees to do something that you wouldn't do? If you are, you probably will not succeed. Number four, obey the absolutes. There is a bright, hard line between right and wrong. You might see people who aren't being caught. Or even if they are caught, they are not convicted. The test that matters, however, is, is your moral compass working? Number five, I think you should always default to yes. Always default to a yes and positive attitude. This means you're always thinking, how can I help other people? The upside of developing relationships built on this positiveness is much greater than the downside of possibly being taken advantage of. Always default to yes. Number six, a very practical tip for you as you enter the workforce. Drop everything when your boss asks you to do something. This isn't necessarily fair. It might not even seem optimal, but it is highly effective. Don't argue, explain, or subvert your boss. Really, your job is to make your boss look good. Incidentally, men, if you're married or when you are married, this is also great advice for dealing with your wife. <laughs> when your wife asks you to do something, drop everything. <laughs> Number seven, become a baker, not an eater. Eaters think the world is a zero-sum game. If someone eats more, they eat less. Therefore, they eat as much as possible, as fast as possible. Bakers, by contrast, do not believe the world is a zero-sum game. They make more pies and bigger pies and cakes and cookies. Everyone gets more sweetness. Bakers succeed more than eaters. Number eight, hire people better than yourself. A players hire A plus players. B players, however, hire C players. C players hire D players. D players hire E players. So as soon as you start hiring B players, you surround yourself with Z players. The surrounding of yourself by Z players is what we call the bozo explosion. <laughs> you need to fight the bozo explosion. Number nine, change your mind. Believe it or not, changing your mind is a sign of intelligence. Steve Jobs, who I worked for, changed his mind all the time. His special gift was that he convinced you that he was right both times. <laughs> Number 10, another very practical piece of advice you'll probably never hear in a commencement or keynote address again. This is the 10, 20, 30 rule of PowerPoint. Important lesson as you enter business. The optimal number of slides in a PowerPoint presentation is 10. 10, not 50 or 60, 10. You'll be lucky to get 10 points across. 
you should give those 10 slides in 20 minutes. You may have a one hour slot, I grant you that. But to this day, 95% of the world is using another operating system that takes 40 minutes to, conject, to connect to the projector. <laughs> and then the 30. The 30 is that the optimal font size for a PowerPoint presentation is 30 points. A rough rule of thumb is figure out who the oldest person is in your audience, divide his or her age by two. If you're pitching to 60-year-old people, divide by two, 30. 50-year-old, divide by two, 25. Someday you may be pitching to a really young venture capitalist. Maybe he's 16. At that point, God bless you, use the eight-point font. <laughs> but until that day, 10 slides, 20 minutes, 30-point font. And number 11, as a bonus to you, Suck it up. <laughs> Suck it up. Little in life comes easy or fast. You need to pay your dues. Think of Mike Rowe and Dirty Jobs. I love that show. What makes him so great? It's his willingness to do the dirty job. Working in the poi factory, the paint factory, getting the dead rats out of the bottom of the house, performing artificial insemination on turkeys, ostriches, chickens, llamas. He does whatever it takes. Suck it up and be willing to do the dirty job. As Steve Jobs would say, there's just one more thing. Bigger picture than success in business. This is success and happiness in life. Have children. Really, children. Children have brought me the greatest joy in my life. Nothing in my life has come close to the joy that I have by being a father. I predict that you students, as parents, you will go through stages. At first, as a child, if you remember, your parents were always right. Then as you grew older, you thought they were wrong. Often you thought they were clueless. As you enter child, excuse me, as you enter adulthood, you will soon see that your parents were often right. You'll come to admit that. And finally, when you have kids, you will become your parents. Scary thought, but the greatest joy. My tribute to you parents. There you have it, my top 10 ways to succeed in business. May you change the world. That is truly the test of your education. You know, the unexamined life may not be worth living, but the unlived life is not worth examining. God bless you all. May you change the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.